You feel him this morning? Hallelujah. If you don't feel him, you need to get a hold of him. If you don't feel him in this place this morning, you might need a little something. I'm not saying that Hallelujah. to be disrespectful toward you, but I'm simply saying that if you don't feel it this morning, you need to get Jesus living in your life. You need to get something on the inside of you because this ought to swell up on you. It ought to swell up in you. It ought to overflow out of you. It ought to flow over out of you into somebody else. It ought to flow out of you and bless the life of somebody else. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name, God. Jesus, you can be seated in this house if you think you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wow, isn't God good? <laughs> Amen. God is a wonderful God. His yes, presence is, is here. It just God. keeps on moving and keeps on stirring. This, this is one of those kind of services where... You, you just, you just kind of let it go and let it happen because if you break it up, you're going to break up what God is doing. I don't want to break up what God is doing. You know, we come to church and we sing and we sing a few songs and then we receive the offering and then we have a time of preaching and that's the order that we go and that's okay. But sometimes God breaks the order and God creates His own order. We work both ways, and we have an order, and we have a we have a plan, and we know what we're doing, and that's fine. God likes order. If you don't believe that God likes order, study the, the universe and how God put everything into existence. And if it wasn't for perfect order, we would float out of here because gravity would not keep us down. We would, we would float out into the outer space, but because of the perfect order of God... You say, God did all that? Yes, God did all that. Give it a thought. Think about it. Think about the perfect order of the universe and how that the sun has to be the exact miles away from the earth or it would burn the earth up. And if it was too far away, then the earth would melt. It's because of the perfect order and the perfect plan of God. God stepped out and He said, let it be. And it happened. God stepped out and He said, let there be life. And life was given. God stepped out and He said, let the universe be created. And it was created in perfect order. He did it simply by the spoken command. I want to tell you something. You want to receive something in your life, you began to speak it. You began to speak it into existence. Don't speak doubt. Don't speak fear. Don't speak worry. Don't speak unbelief. Don't speak doubt. But you began to speak. I am what God has called me to be. I will do what God has called me to do. I will rise up and be everything that God has called me to be. I won't listen to the lies of the critics and the lies of the enemy. I won't listen to the critics that say, you're not capable, you're not good enough, you don't have the ability, you don't have the strength. Oh, let me tell you something this morning. My strength doesn't come from myself. My strength comes from God. My abilities come from God. I'm going to rise up. I'm not going to be status quo, but I'm going to be something spectacular in the house of God. You say, what does it take to be spectacular? All it takes to be spectacular is to have your heart surrendered to Jesus Christ and in a, in a way about that you're ready to move in relationship with Him. Totally surrendered, wholeheartedly surrendered. That's what it takes to be spectacular in the house of God and to step out and to follow His direction and do what He's called you to do and be purposed of what He has purposed for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know 
I've said it about 10 or 12 times, but I'm going to say it again. I am excited for what God is doing. I don't care what happened 30 and 40 years ago. And yes, we, we have seen some mighty moves of God. And we have seen some mighty things happen. But that was past. That was yesterday. We are now in the year 2013. And yes, Jesus Christ never changes. But the Bible said in Hebrews 11 and 8 that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What He did once, He'll do it again. What he did in the early church, he can pour out upon the church of joy. We are still in the same age. We are still in the same dispensation. And the same church that began in the book of Acts chapter 2 is the same church that is still alive, that is still well, that is still functioning, and is still moving forward in the year 2013. Has it changed? Same time. Amen. I'm excited for what God is doing in this hour. Oh, yes. We will never be the same again. We will never be the same again. Hallelujah. I see things in the spirit. I see things in the spirit realm right now and I believe. And I prophesy to this house. And I believe that this is the greatest year that this church will ever see. It is a day of new beginnings. It's a new year. It's a freshness. It's a fresh anointing. Not being disrespectful toward anything that has ever happened. We build off of those things that have happened. Those are the foundations that's going to take us to where we are going. For without a foundation you fall. And so the foundation has been built and the foundation has been erected. But today is a new day and we're going to embark upon new adventures. And we're going to step out and do things that maybe we have never seen or done before. Hallelujah. Surely the presence of the Lord is just in our place right now. You feel the softness of His Spirit. I believe in this year 2013 that you're going to want to be in this house. You're going to want to be here every Sunday and, and every Wednesday. You're, you're going to want to be in this place. You know why? Because sometimes all it takes is to miss one time and you've missed the blessing that God would forever have blessed you with and because you were not here, you did not receive what God wanted for, for you. But I believe in this year, the year 2013, we're going to see bigger commitments than we've ever seen before. We're going to see greater commitments than, than you've ever done before in your life, amongst your family and amongst yourself as an individual. I want to challenge you to commit your life and to commit yourself to be in the house of God. Always say that people do whatever they want to do and they'll go wherever they want to go. Don't allow church to not be a part of your life. You fill every other part of your life up and you do all those other things. Don't lay church aside and, and don't lay God aside, but put Him first in this year. And I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when we do, I'm still going to continue to prophesy and believe it and be an expectation that we're going to see God 
fill this house. There will be no empty seats. We will have to expand and, and we will have to enlarge because we're going to see souls brought in. We're going to see souls brought in. Drug addicts healed. Alcoholics healed. Maybe even some prostitutes brought into this house and be set free and delivered in Jesus' name. You know what my goal is? My goal is to slow down Brandon's job. Those of you that don't know what Brandon does, he's a city cop. My goal is to slow him down a little bit. See some people set free. See some people delivered. You see, I was once a drug addict, an alcoholic. I served time in jail, not, not long periods of time, but three months at a time. And God came to me and I, I met Him and He set me free. When I first came back to the Lord, I was facing one year jail sentence. And had it not been for God, I would have had to have gone and served that time. But because that God came into my life and God changed me and God really changed me, it, it wasn't just a, a jailhouse experience. It, it wasn't just because that I was facing some jail time that I was saved. But no, I'm going to tell you, God totally set me free. You know, a lot of people get saved when they're facing jail time or when they're in jail. And I, I appreciate those experiences that they receive and those people that go into the jail house and, and speak to those people because they might receive something in there that, that they can eventually remember and maybe someday change them. But I'm going to tell you there's something different than a jailhouse religion and a relationship with Jesus Christ. Just as much as there is difference in a church house religion than there is a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I am convinced this morning that there are people that are sold out to religion they're sold out to a religious process, but they've never met the Savior. They never have really met Jesus. You say, how did God set you free from those things? I didn't even come to talk about this this morning. I, I came with a preparation and a plan to preach something today. God just told me to share this. You say, how did you come clean? Well, I remember the day that I came clean before God and I came to the front and, and the, the man spoke over my life and he said, from this day forward, from this day forward, you're going to be different. And he even said that you're going to preach to many people. It was Julian Carroll, our ex-governor of the state of Kentucky. He was down in our old building in 1996, in September of 1996. I believe it was September the 9th. And he spoke over my life and he said, you will never be the same, but from this day forward, you're going to be different and you're going to preach to many people. I came into church that morning. I was at the point of suicide. I was at the point of taking my own life because I was hopeless, because I was lost, because I did not know where to turn except for God. And I knew that God was always there. But I, I had tried everything. I had tried recovery centers and I had been in jail and, and institutionalized and halfway houses and, and all these things. 
and nothing seemed to work in my life. But I remember getting up on that Sunday morning. I was in Louisville. Had no anticipation of, of going to church that morning. But I remember getting out of bed and I thought, God, I, I'm at the end of my life. I, I, I can't do anything. Everything that I've tried, it does not work. I might as well take my life. Something moved me and said, get to church. I went to church that Sunday morning. When that was spoken over my life, I went away from there and I thought, God, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make this happen? How is this ever going to work? I, I'm used to getting up out of bed and the first thing I do is, is, is grab me some alcohol and I drink my life away. It's the, I do it day in and day out, 9 o'clock in the morning. I start drinking. How am I going to change my life? I'm going to tell you folks, I was down and out. I didn't just get drunk at nights and on weekends, but I was every day of my life when I rose out of bed. It was the first thing that I did day in, day out, week in and week out, and month in and month out, and several years after several years. I thought, God, how am I going to do this? At the time, I smoked cigarettes and I went home and I, and I lit up a cigarette and I started to smoke it and I thought, what, what am I doing? This, this is something that's just going to lead me right back in to where I was one step at a time. And I ripped that thing up and I threw that pack away and I set my life upon a pattern. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I took it one day at a time. It wasn't anything about how big my willpower was because my willpower was zilch. I had tried it on willpower long enough. It was nothing about my power. But it was by the mercy and the grace and the hand and the power of the all-living almighty God. I share that with you to share with you this. You may have come into this building this morning and, and you don't know how you're ever going to succeed or how you're ever going to make it. Maybe, maybe you've got a drug addiction. Maybe you've got an alcohol problem. Maybe you've got different kind of problems in your life, different kind of addictions. It doesn't matter. They're all addictions and they all work the same way. You say, how do I do it in my life? Here's how you do it. The first step is that you admit that you have a problem and you say, God, I am powerless in my life. And God, I give it over to you. I turn my life over to you. I give my all in all in you. Maybe you don't know how you're going to do it or how you're going to let it go or release it or set it free. But Jesus is here with you and God is here with you to help you and to bring you through your situation. As we stand in this building this morning, spoken to you this morning, I want you to step out from where you are. Come on, step out from where you are. I know that God has spoken to somebody here today because God did not give me that word to just, to just be void, but God said, my word will not return back void. I want you to come and just stand to the front of this building right now, and we're going to pray over everybody that comes. Come on, there are more in this house. There are others in this house. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared to step out from where you are. Don't be scared to step out because today is going to be a new day in your life.
Lord's house. Come on, don't waste time. Don't take too the long. That's it. Come on, there are others. I know that there are others in the building of this many people. There are others that are here right now that you need to step out and you need a release in your life. Come on, people. Come on, step out. Today is the day of salvation. You have no guarantee of another day. You have no guarantee that you will be here next Sunday. But today is the day that the Lord has made. 